Databases can grow in two different ways, vertically or horizontally. Scaling up vertically means that the database is giving more CPU and RAM on a single machine to handle more traffic. The problem is, boom, they can handle a finite and limit grow. The most popular apps today, such as Twitter, Reddit, or WhatsApp, are using a non-SQL database like MongoDB, Neo4j, Redis, or Cassandra to grow horizontally. This is called sharding. Traditionally, data has been stored in RDBMS, or Relational Database Management Systems. In relational databases, we store data in rows and columns with one-to-end or end-to-end relationships. To make sure the data in these tables are always synchronized with each other, we could implement a process called normalization. This process involves storing the data in separate tables that are joined by a foreign key. But as data size increase, Relational databases encounter bottlenecks in CPU, memory, or disk usage. And in order to maintain performance, high-quality hardware is required, and as you can imagine, is very expensive. The data requirements for modern applications exceed the capacity of a traditional RDBMS. And sometimes, the structure of the data, with all those tables joined by foreign kits, can be broken. But good news, data sharding or partition can help us alleviate that issue when we scale up. In simple terms, sharding is the process of dividing tables into subsets. Each of those subsets will be stored in different database servers. There are different sharding techniques depending on the data structure. Let's take a look on some examples. First technique, GeoBase sharding. In geobase sharding, data is partitioned based in user locations, usually continents or regions. The second option could be range-based sharding. Here we divide the database on a range of key values. For example, if we decide to use letter, we will have 26 different shards, one per each of the letters of the English vocabulary. Another technique is called hash base. Hash base sharding uses a hashing algorithm to generate a hash base on the key value to compute the partition. Another big topic around sharding is automatic or manual. Automatic sharding will dynamically repartition the data when detects an uneven distribution of the data or queries among the shards. Now let's talk about some advantage of sharding. Scalability. Sharding allows a system to scale up as the data science increase without any limitation. Second benefit, performance. Having a smaller set of data on each shards also means that the indexes are smaller, resulting in a faster query performance. Third, reliability and accessibility. Let's assume you have an unplanned event of outage that affects a shard. The entire system will remain accessible while the shard is restored. This is super important because a downtime will not bring down the entire system. Number four, cost. Nodes can run on commodity hardware because the set of data is smaller and you will not lose performance. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on high quality hardware. Finally, let's talk about some disadvantage of sharding. First, not all the data can be shared. Second, manual sharding can be very complex and can lead to hotspot because each shard is stored in a separate database server. Last disadvantage is that once you set up sharding, it's gonna be very hard, almost impossible to undo sharding or to change the shard key. I hope you enjoyed this short video about sharding. Don't forget to subscribe, happy coding.